हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वी आर डिस्कसिंग द सब्जेक्ट टोटल क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट दिस इज आशीष टी पाटिल फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग के आई टी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग ऑटोनॉमस नाउ इन फर्स्ट यूनिट लास्ट टाइम वी हैव डिस्कस द कंसेप्ट ऑफ क्वालिटी एंड द डायमेंशन ऑफ प्रोडक्ट एंड सर्विस क्वालिटी सो टूडे वी विल स्टार्ट विद द कंसेप्ट ऑफ टोटल क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट so total quality management tqm is defined as both philosophy and a set of guiding principles that represent the foundation of continuously improving organization so in today's competitive era of globalization your organization should be in a state of continuous improvement so tqm provides a base that is it is a philosophy and it provides set of guiding principles so that your organization should continuously improve and accordingly produce the best of the products and service for their customers it is the application of quantitative methods and human resources to improve all the processes within the organization and exceed customer needs now and in the future so it's basically for exceeding the customer needs now as well as in the future so it uses some of the quantitative methods it takes help of human resources so that it can improve all the processes within the organization so that the organization should be in a state of continuous improvement so in a nutshell you can say total quality management as total means made up of the whole the whole organization as such quality is the degree of excellence a product or service provides and what is management management is act art or the manner of handling controlling and directing the entire organization so tqm can be defined as the art of managing the whole the whole organization to achieve the excellence continuously the word continuous is very important your organization should be in a state of continuous improvement so that you can withstand in this fierce competition now let us see some of the basic concepts of total quality management now various basic concepts are like the first one is management involvement when it comes the part of management management should participate in quality program it should develop the quality council it should direct the participation of each and every employee because it's the management on behalf of which the entire organization works the entire organization is made up of the employees so it is the role of management that they should introduce various quality programs they should lead by example they should develop the quality councils and they should direct the participation of all the employees for the overall growth of the organization the next concept of tqm is focus on customer so one should understand who is the customer now customer are of two types one is internal and another with is external now external customer is the one who expects the product or service the ultimate end product or service whereas internal customers are somewhat different for example if we see the assembly department and if we are in a position of assembling the product and if we demand the production department to supply various parts so that we can assemble that product now here assembly department is internal customer of production department again uh, the dispatch department will ask assembly department to send the assembly so that they can pack it properly with all other necessary things and dispatch to customer now here the dispatch department is internal customer of assembly department 
so each and every person of the organization should understand who is the exact customer you should understand the voice of the customer also now here when you say voice of the customer that means you should understand the basic needs and basic want now there is a difference between need and want for example if you are thirsty and if you ask for a glass of water then you can say that is a need but if you specifically ask that i need a mineral water then that is the want so you should understand the needs and wants of the customer and again it talks about do it right first time and every time so whatever you are producing any product or service you should produce it right first time okay and every time so trying to avoid the mistake is the basic agenda when you talk about total quality management the third aspect is involvement and utilization of entire workforce the workforce at all levels though it may be lower level supervisory level or mid management level senior management level all should get involved in all kinds of decision making and accordingly entire organization should lead towards the continuous improvement so it is nothing but involvement and utilization of entire workforce of your organization next concept is continuous improvement so as we are continuously discussing the word continuous you have found in at many places rather okay so that is because quality never stops okay uh, right from placing orders bill errors delivery minimizing the wastage and scrap everywhere you should see that your quality should be at par then only you can say that your organization is continuously improving day by day next is treating suppliers as partners now when you say the vendors or suppliers now if you treat them as a partner then that belongingness that sense of belongingness will be developed among your partners uh, among your suppliers rather and they will definitely do the business in the greater interest of both that is customer as well as supplier so you can say that no business exists without supplier and that is why you should equally treat your suppliers just like your partners next is performance measures so creating accountability in all levels so if you want to develop best products then you should have best performance measures at all places because creating that accountability in each employee's mind will definitely improve your quality so therefore whatever you are producing at all levels you should create the performance measures or you should create the accountability of that specific work so these were some concepts of tqm now let us discuss some of the tqm principles on what principles tqm works now the first principle is customer orientation so you should understand the current and future needs of customers you should meet those requirements and you should exceed their expectations so it is not that you should only satisfy your customer rather you should delight your customer you should understand their current as well as future needs what product they need today and what enhancement they expect in future if you understand that thing very well then definitely one can say that our organization will proceed further in very nice manner next one is the leaders now what leader does leader defines the goals and he or she tries to align the organization with those goals they try to ensure the creation and maintenance of internal frameworks for achieving organizational goals so any organization you serve is having the internal frameworks or internal systems if these systems are aligned properly if the goals of the organizations are properly aligned with these systems of human resource then definitely one can lead the organization very well 
third principle is involvement of employees so you know that employees are the primary factor of your organization so you should try to have the involvement of all the employees at all levels the levels could be the senior management middle management lower management supervisors or even workers so each and every employee of your organization should be involved in all the processes allotted to them the next principle is process orientation so managing and directing activities and the associated resources in form of a process so there are different kind of resources man machine material method so if you should be able to manage and direct these different resources in the form of process then your task of achieving tqm will be easy next one is system oriented management so recognizing understanding and managing processes that interact with each other as a system helps to achieve the organizational goals that means whatever processes you have built you should try to build those processes in a form of system so if you build it as a system then definitely each and every resource will get properly aligned and it will be easier to achieve the organizational goal then next is continuous improvement now continuous improvement of all services through learning and innovation your organization should be always in a state of learning you should always be in a state of innovative mind so that you can be able to produce innovative products which will meet your customers needs and wants the seventh principle is factual decision making so your decision making should be based on factual data you should collect the data then you should thoroughly go through that data and analyze that data and based on that analysis you should create your decision next principle is mutually beneficial relationships with suppliers so as we have discussed earlier also you should have a mutual beneficial relationship with your supplier you should treat your supplier as partner so that that sense of belongingness will come in your supplier and they will also work as if our own organization for you so these are various tqm principles now let us discuss the evolution of quality or the history of the quality now how the quality gets evolved now prior to 20th century quality is considered as an art or it was considered as an era of workmanship now later in 1900 f w taylor started the concept or he brought the concept of scientific management where rationalization of work and its breakdown leads to greater need of standardization inspection and supervision so these three concept that is standardization your product should be a standardized one whatever you are producing you should inspect it thoroughly and whatever processes you are doing you should supervise properly so these three concepts were evolved then in 1930s you can consider it is a beginning and study of quality control by shevard now shevard is a person who evolved the concept of quality control parallelly there were studies by r a fisher on experimental design that means the design should be based on experimentation also there was a beginning of control charts at western electric company in united states of america which played vital role in further quality development in late 1930s you can say that quality standards and approaches are introduced in france and japan and you can say that in this period the concept of statistical quality control reliability and maintenance engineering were evolved 
So, these three concepts were very useful in overall approach of quality management. In 1942, work by Deming at the Ministry of War in USA on quality control. So, Deming started working on quality control and a working group also was set up by Juran and Dodge. Now, Juran, Deming, these are the quality gurus who later on uh, revolutionized the concept of quality all over the world. So, in 1942, working group set up by Juran and Dodge on statistical quality control in US Army, which further supported in overall development of statistical quality control. In 1944, Dodge and Deming carried out research on acceptance sampling. Now, before that, the quality was checked thoroughly. For example, if you are manufacturing the components and say if you are having a batch of 100 components, then each and every component will be checked for its quality. But later on, Dodge and Deming introduced the concept of acceptance sampling, where Instead of going for all the batch quality check, you can have the batches and from that batch some sample will be collected and those sample will be tested for the entire quality. And based on that sample quality, you can judge the entire batch quality. So that is the concept of acceptance sampling. Then in 1945, uh, founding of the Japan Standard Association was there. Then in 1946, American Society for Quality Council was founded. Then in 1950, Deming visited Japan at the invitation of Ishikawa. Ishikawa is the originator of Ishikawa diagram or fishbone diagram. And later on, because of Deming's work in Japan, almost all the companies in Japan accepted this concept of total quality management and that is why we can say that Japan is one of the growing nation day by day. All the companies in Japan you can see they have adopted this concept of total quality management very well and that is why they are able to produce the best of the products. Then in 1951 quality assurance concepts were, was increasingly accepted throughout, especially in Japan and America. And in 1954, a TQC book was published, which was later accepted universally and it educated the people the concept of total quality control. So, this is the overall evolution of quality. Now, let us pause your video and you try to give the answers to this question that is what is TQM that is total quality management and how the concept of quality is evolved. I hope you have tried to answer these two questions. Now, let us see what the quality gurus have contributed in the area of TQM. Now, Shevard, Deming, Furan, Feganbaum, these are the quality gurus, okay, and they have introduced some of the concepts of TQM, and these are widely accepted globally later on. Now, Shevard developed the concept of control chart theory and the PDCA cycle, that is, plan, do, check, and act cycle. Deming introduced the concept of statistical process control. Juran introduced return on investment. That means, whatever investment you are making for developing the product, you should have enough returns on those investments. Then Figenbaum developed the concept of total quality control, management involvement and employee involvement. Ishikawa developed a diagram that is called as cause and effect diagram or fish bone diagram because it is having a typical structure of fish bone. That is why it is also called as fish bone diagram. 
और इशिकावा डायग्राम एंड ऑल्सो इशिकावा इंट्रोड्यूस द कंसेप्ट ऑफ क्वालिटी सर्कल नाउ क्रॉसबी क्रॉसबी इज वन सच क्वालिटी गुरु हु सेड दैट क्वालिटी इज फ्री ओके देन ही ऑल्सो सेड दैट क्वालिटी इज कंफॉर्मेंस टू व्हाट एवर रिक्वायरमेंट्स देन अनदर क्वालिटी गुरु दैट इज तागुचे ही इंट्रोड्यूस द लॉस फंक्शन कांसेप्ट and he also introduced the concept of design of experiments so these are various concepts in total quality management and you can go through all these concepts to learn the sheer meaning of total quality management as such so with this we will stop today's session in next session we will see the framework of tqm and various costs associated with quality thank you